In a previous video, I created this level where I can step on a switch and it turns on or off a thing in the world that implements this switch-controlled blueprint interface. It just has these methods turn on and turn off. Now we can imagine as I build up my world and add more features, it's possible that maybe switches will break and I won't know why. This motivates the need for some kind of automated testing to ensure that subsystems are working as expected to prevent against regression bugs. So what I'm going to show in this video is how to set up a functional test to do exactly that. So to start, I'm going to duplicate this level, and I'm going to call it ftest, um, let's call it switch test. Now the name here is really important, it does have to start with ftest underscore, and what you call it after that seems to be arbitrary. So uh, what I want to do is make a new folder for it, and I'm going to put all of my test assets within the test folder. That's an optional step, but it's a good structure. Okay, so let's open that level. And I'm going to gut the pieces that I don't need anymore. I'm going to take out these two switches. I'm going to take out that character and take out the elevator. And, you know, I could take out all that geometry too, but it's not hurting me at all. Uh, so now let's drop in a single switch, put it in front of the character, and say uh, when he crosses that switch, I expect a thing to be turned on and off. But it doesn't really matter what that thing is. Because I have a, an interface, I can use a technique called uh, mock objects. So. I'll make a blueprint class, which will be an actor, and I'll call it mock switch controlled, which will just be a simple object that implement, implements the switch controlled interface. Let's set that up. Under class settings, we can say it implements this interface. Make sure that's compiled, and then in the event graph, what I'll do, I'll just add a variable here called uh, turned on that tells me whether or not this thing was turned on. Um, we'll go ahead and expose that for simplicity and then we'll look for the event turn on. When we get that event we can just toggle that variable. So back in the level let's tie to, uh, we'll actually better bring one of those in and now I can connect my switch to that thing. Good. Um, so what should happen is if this guy steps on the switch, that should turn on. What we need to set up is the actual test logic to ensure that that happens. So I'm going to make another new blueprint, and this time I'm going to make it a functional test. So I'll call this BP switch test. And I'm going to drag it into the world. You can see it, uh, it renders in kind of a unique way. It looks like a little uh, piece of paper on it. Um, and let's take a quick look at what kind of things are in here. Uh, a good place to start maybe is to set a time limit. We can say if this doesn't succeed within three seconds, which is more than enough time to move that character onto the switch, uh, then we'll say there's a, a timeout failure. So let's see what that looks like, because then we can see how to run the test. So I'll make sure everything's saved. And now in the window menu, under developer tools, I can bring up the session front end. And in the session front end is a tab called automation. And we can see there's a section here which is project, functional tests, and here's my test. So I'll select this, and notice there's a little one there to say it's going to run one test, and I'll run it. Now, of course, nothing happens because I haven't added the logic to move the guy over, but that's enough that we should be able to see in the session front end that our test has failed. In fact, we get this uh, test timed out in three seconds. So that's good, and uh, you know, for those of you who are into uh, test-driven development or agile software development, we can think of this as a red-green refactor kind of sequence. We, we now know that uh, the current setup fails, so let's add some of the logic to make it work. Um, and that's all going to be within my uh, switch test. So a simple thing to do here is let's add a variable, which will be the character we want to move for the test, and that can be of type character. So then uh, let's expose that because that will allow us to, again, just select from the world this character. And we can say while the test is running, which is event tick, uh, we'll just send this guy the command to move forward. So we can say add movement input. And let's make sure he's moving forward. We can get the forward vector and pass that into here. Good enough for now. Good. Save and let's uh, uh, let's see. I must have closed that session front end, so I'll just bring it up again. Developer tools, session front end. There it is. Automation, project tests. Run the test. 
Now he moves forward. Good. Now notice that we're uh, possessing this character. I don't really want to possess him. Let's take that out. So over here we can make sure that he is not possessed by the player. There we are. Also, uh, there's a nice feature in these tests where we can set a, a vantage point from which to watch the test execute. So let's do that. Let's take a camera and drop it into the world. And I'm going to make this uh, a little bit higher and make it look down a little bit. Good. Uh, so from the test now, we can say observation point is that camera. And here's my session front end. Let's look at that. Right, so now we're seeing it from this other perspective, and uh, there's no player involved. There's no player controller touching that pawn, or touching that character, I should say. Uh, it's all done just with the uh, standard AI controller. Okay. So now, uh, let's say that we want to ensure, uh, or rather, let's just watch that variable. I don't have any events set up with my uh, Blueprint interface. I have another video about using the observer design pattern, which, which we could use here with an event dispatcher. Uh, I'll add a link to that in the description. Um, but let's just do this in the uh, kind of quick and dirty way, which would be to say, have another variable, which will be the target. And this will be my uh, mock switch controlled object. Again, I'll expose that so that I can just grab it from here and say, this test is going to check this object. And then we can just ask the question, uh, has it been turned on? There we are. So if that's the case, then our test succeeds. And we can say, uh, finish test. And that will stop this test from executing with the result of succeeded. And if we wanted to, we add a message here. We can say, um, the switch turned on the target. All right. Let's grab that session front end again. Let's run the test. There he goes. And notice uh, he has stopped. And that tells us he's actually uh, wasn't getting tick events anymore. And we can see now that that test has succeeded. So the example here is pretty simple, just ensuring that the plumbing is working with the Blueprint interface. Uh, obviously, we can use this approach to add much more complicated systems to test uh, more complicated logic. I hope this is enough to get you started. I hope this is useful to you. Happy programming.